actually, I just came from the Amazon press conference where they announced the new Kindle, and I had wanted to show you guys on Twitter what people were saying about it, but I can't seem to get um, internet access. Do you have the? Yeah, I have the. Anyway, um, I don't know if you guys followed it at all. Is that is everybody on Twitter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and where, what departments are you guys in? Are you editorial, marketing, managing. Managing ad, okay. And okay. marketing and PR. Publicity. Okay. Agency. Any editorial people? Okay. All right, good. I just want to have an idea of who I'm talking to here. Anyway, so the Amazon press conference they announced this um, new bigger Kindle. It's four hundred and eighty nine dollars, I think, which is sort of shockingly expensive if you ask me. But um, I do think that it has a chance of you know, maybe infiltrating the universities and um, maybe you know, getting into that market, which I think is needed and necessary. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll call that up later when I get to the core. Um, so this, this slide, I did uh, just a few slides and then I'll go to a Q&A. Um, this is not far from the picture of what it looked like and it was not that long ago. It was Carol Baskin at Task, she was one of my bosses a long time ago. And, um, you know, time is moving. Everything is moving really quickly now. Like, it seemed like it went really slowly for a long time, or you didn't notice the change. And now I feel like, didn't the Kindle 2 just come out a minute ago? And like, now suddenly there's a Kindle 3, and, you know, what's next in a minute? Um, but I'm not kidding when I say that um, I, used to type a, I used to type a submission letter, and it would literally take me two weeks. With, and if I made a mistake, I had to pull it out and start over. And actually, my first job was, um, I submitted the Mambo Kings play Songs of Love by Oscar Uelos. <laughs> yeah. So um, then, you know, there were, by the way, computers, because I had a computer when I was in college, but in the publishing industry, they really hadn't, they hadn't gotten there yet. My next job was actually working for Carol, and um, we had, I don't know if you remember, this one computer and a sign-up sheet, and everybody used to have to go into the room, and you got like an hour to write your pressures, and when you typed, like, you know, 15 minutes later, it would show up on the screen, and then like your hour was up, and you have to leave and sign up again to come finish your press release. And we still have to hand type all the labels too. Crazy. Um, then by say the early to mid 90s, I was working at Warner Books, which is now Hachette, and they um, they got the first desktop computers in a major publishing house that I know of, um, and we got Macs. Everyone got Macs, but believe it or not, we didn't have. Um, we didn't have email yet, but it did, it did transform our jobs. You, know, you could write your press release at your desk, you have to type labels over and over again. And that was a big part of how we spent our day. Um, and then a few years later, maybe the early to mid 90s, we got, um, we got email. And email definitely changed you know, the way we worked. I feel like it's, um, you know, it's on fast forward now, we're just running really fast. Um, anyway. You know, communication and the way we did our jobs, I would say, dramatically changed in the early to mid 90s once we got email at our desks. Um, we were still doing traditional marketing through, you know, the old media, the New York Times, and at the time it wasn't Oprah, it was the Phil Donahue show. Um, but it was, you know, it was pretty traditional stuff. Um, the platforms, you know, hadn't changed in, in many, many years. Um, then, you know, come around, I guess, the early, you know, the 2000, 2001, I remember for the first time hearing about Friendster, um, and I remember authors on Friendster, actually, in maybe 2002, 2003, and I remember the first time I ever heard an author really work it was Josh Kilmore Purcell, and that was maybe 2004, 2003, 2004, and he did a big MySpace page and he put a widget on there with a chapter of his book, and he did some kind of contest. If you put his widget onto your MySpace page, um, you know, you got, actually it was a signed book play, because I remember thinking, um, people are actually doing this for a signed book play, but that was meaningful to them. But anyway, things started changing. Like suddenly, we didn't feel, I didn't feel so dependent on, it seemed like there were, you know, everyone's saying, you know, it's ending, it's changing, you know, people feel nervous, but I feel excited about it. I feel like there's more opportunities cropping up all over, whereas it used to just be, you know, us on the begging end asking the media to do something for us. Now suddenly you have all these opportunities to do it yourself, whether it's on your blog or the author's blog, we're not so dependent, the power is shifting. 
And I actually, I felt that a few years ago. I wasn't able to distill it the way I am now, but a few years ago, I definitely felt the earth moving. Um, and I remember I went and I spoke to Jane Friedman about it, who's one of my mentors, and she said, um, you know, don't look for a new job, create something new. And that was actually when I started um, the job that I'm in now, which is a lot of fun because nobody's ever done it before, so I'm sort of making it up as I go along. Um, now, you know, I, I saw um, this, which was, I don't know if you guys all saw this, but Ashton Kutcher has more followers, and this is actually a few weeks ago, than CNN, and that to me, really epitomizes the way it shifted. So suddenly, this person can have more direct contact. Like, he's no longer, you know, the media is no longer in control of message. He can say whatever he wants to say directly, and that's, you know, that's a really profound shift for all of us. Um, you know, but I feel like it's more exemplified even by somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk, because the media made Ashton Kutcher, but Gary Vaynerchuk, he came from nowhere. Um, you know, he was a Russian immigrant working at a liquor store and created his own, you know, video blog and website early on and just pumps out tons of good content and he's growing at a rate, this was actually a week old, of 10,000 followers on Facebook a day. And, you know, his fans are rabid and he can communicate with them directly. So, you know, he's no longer dependent on a TV station to put up his show or a newspaper to do his story. He can do it himself. So that, to me, is really exciting, and it's, it's a huge opportunity that all of us and all of our authors can take advantage of. Um, so, anyway, devices. Who reads on any devices? Do people read on? That's good. Um, I feel like everybody needs, like, we are the future, we're creating the future, so we can't just sit back and look at, you know, and hear what people are saying. I feel like everybody needs to, as much as possible, roll up your sleeves and try it and see what's possible on a Kindle, what's possible on the Sony e-reader, what's possible on an iPhone, and start thinking of it in terms of, you know, if you're in marketing, what does that mean for you? Can you create some kind of app that's a marketing tool, or for instance, with Daily Lit. We should just try out all of this stuff. With Daily Lit, it turned into an incredibly powerful marketing tool for us. Um, and if you're an editorial, you know how to build the books differently. So these, you know, right now, um, you know, the Kindle isn't you can't hyperlink or see video through it, but with the iPhone you can. So we need to start thinking of building the books and the content differently so that it fits the formats. It's not just a printed something that's now on a different, it's like, you know, somebody said one time um, that it's like, when radio first became, when TV first started, people would get on the TV and act as if it was the radio, but um, it's a whole different medium, and it took a little while for people, for people to realize that it can be used differently, it's the same type of thing, I think. So I would just, you know, like to put a big plug in for everybody to try all these things. Sign up for Daily Lit. Educate everybody you know. Sign up for, you know, start different blogs on different platforms. See what they're like so you know, you know, you can educate your bosses. You can educate the authors. And you can speak from firsthand experience, not to mention it's fun. Um, but we should all be testing out all these things and evangelizing and being be part of, you know, creating the future that's happening so quickly, it's, it's exciting. I was gonna say it's scary, but it's not scary, it's exciting.